Last class I told you that molar mass basically existed. Today we're going to see how it's used and why it's used. So molar mass is just going to be that really quick, easy way that we're going to bridge the gap between how much we have physically on a scale and how much we have truly, like how many atoms and all that kind of stuff. So molar mass is going to be able to give us that bridge so that we know exactly how many atoms we're dealing with. And uh, we just need to know how to calculate it. And the very easiest way to learn how to calculate it is by doing an actual problem together. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna calculate the molar mass of H2O. It's a pretty easy compound to deal with. There are only two elements and we're just gonna go through it together and see how we calculate it. So my very first step that I always do whenever I'm calculating a molar mass is I just list everything that's in the actual compound. So H2O has two things in it. It has hydrogen and it has oxygen. Cool, that very first step is done just by looking at the actual compound and agreeing to what's actually present. So we have what's actually in our compound listed, hydrogen and oxygen. Our very next step is going to be to look at our periodic table and match our mass for those elements that are actually in the compound. So we see on the periodic table that hydrogen's mass is 1.008. So on my actual thing next to hydrogen, I'll write 1.008. I have to do the same thing for oxygen now. So I'm gonna come over to oxygen and I'm gonna see that it is 15.999. So then next to oxygen, I will write that number 15.999. Now that I have the masses for the individual elements, I'm gonna figure out how much each contributes to the total mass of the compound. I do this by multiplying each atom's mass by the actual number of that element that's in the compound okay so hydrogen remember that those subscripts are counts so hydrogen we see that we have two hydrogens present in h2o so i'm going to multiply hydrogen's mass by two and i went ahead and did that calculation there then i need to look at oxygen and figure out how many times i need to multiply oxygen by oxygen does not have a subscript but remember invisible subscripts are one so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to say that i'm multiplying 15.999 by one. It doesn't actually change my number, but the good thing about writing this out is that whenever I'm looking back at this problem, I don't end up thinking that I accidentally skipped a step or um, I know when I messed up, when I uh, rewrote this, I missed a number or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write that down. Once I have each individual atom's uh, total mass contributed written out, I'm gonna go ahead and add those resultant numbers together and I'm going to attach its appropriate unit. Molar mass's unit is grams per mole and it could also be written shorthand. Remember, scientists are very lazy. So uh, grams would be shortened to just G and mole, would uh, we took off a whole letter and we just shortened it to M-O-L. When I did that, I just went ahead and rewrote everything and I was lazy again. And all I did was I just added a plus sign and I drew a line showing that I was gonna be doing math. And then I just added those together. And when I added those together, I ended up with the number 18.015 grams per mole. And I needed to be careful because I am finding the molar mass of H2O that I told myself in the actual unit that this was the molar mass of H2O. The reason that you wanna do that and not just leave it out is because you're gonna be calculating molar masses all over the place. And you don't want to have to recalculate something that you've already calculated just because you didn't tell yourself that you had already done it. So we make sure that we label that as uh, the molar mass for H2O, and that way we save ourselves some work.